Hello, everyone. It's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Uh, so Aptera released their March update on Saturday, and I'm sure most of you guys, if not all of you guys, have already seen it. Um, but I thought we'd kind of go over it and give you some of my thoughts on it and what I think is going on. Okay, so here is a shot of Chris McCammon and Audra uh, at CPC. We know that they were at that JEC conference in Paris and we've had lots of footage from there. And then right after that, we know that they went to CPC uh, to look at how things are going over there. And obviously they shot this footage. So this footage is a couple of weeks old, um, at least three or four weeks old. Um, so I think that what we're seeing here is not the fully completed body that will be shipped over, but uh, what they had about three or four weeks ago. The first thing that I think about when I see this is the, um, the entire body is sitting on what looks like a very light duty cart which makes me think that this cart probably can't hold more than several hundred pounds. And so this body probably weighs several hundred pounds um, at, at the most. And I don't know the exact specs on how much this weighs. I'm sure that's something that they'd be willing to tell us if we asked them. Um, and uh, But it's a very lightweight body. And we see here it's, a, it's an assembled body not like the exploded body that we saw at JEC Group. Now this body is has less parts, like we don't see any of the doors. Um, there's no uh, chassis structure on this thing. It's just the uh, just the main parts without any of the other parts on here. The JEC body had the the doors and stuff. This one does not. All right, the second thing I noticed when I was looking at this is this part right here um, looks like either one, there is damage, or two, there's dirt, or three, there's adhesive um, right in this area. And it seems to be just this area that has this because when you see it from the other side, the other side has the exact same, uh, exact same thing. This area right here, um, I believe is the part where the latch for the door mechanism would be. So I don't know if this is a temporary piece that they've bolted onto here um, and this would be swapped out for the latch or this is part of the latching uh, mechanism uh, part. Yeah, it makes me think this is not a temporary part because it fits in very, very well and it is uh, bolted on here and it looks like this. these are either Torx or the star pattern uh, bolts. Um, but yeah, this is the latching mechanism and you see a lot of the bolts on this thing. And you can just see how intricate this is. It's really nice. There's the, I think the hole for the go glow to go through. And obviously this is the honeycomb, uh, pattern for the rear hatch. Uh, again, this was a design that, um, Jason Hill wanted. And it turned out to be even more rigid than just having like ribs there. But this look is a lot more aesthetic. All right. So you see here again, um, what, what we're talking about, we saw it on the other side. And here's the go go. Again, you see bolts here. So this part's bolted down. Some right here as well. What you just saw was the first production body structure bonded together. And it's on its way to our headquarters in Carlsbad right now. This body allowed... All right, so that was the probably the single biggest statement in this entire update is that the body structure is on its way to Aptera right now. A um, couple of things that are not clear from that. Um, we don't know if it, if it is it just this body structure that's being sent over, or is it an entire rolling chassis that's being sent over. Um, I'm going to guess that it's just the body structure. And so that may mean that 
This is just the body structure for them to test out um, how they're going to place things and whether the the um, the cabling and all that stuff fits into the body structure well. And we're going to have to wait a little longer for the rolling chassis to show up to have a rolling uh, PI build. Allows our electrical systems team to finalize cable routing, connectors, and placement of components in the real world in preparation for drivable PI vehicles. Okay, so the that statement makes me feel like this is not going to be a drivable PI vehicle. This is just a body only that's being sent over to just place components and make sure that things fit and and, and they go as planned. And because I think if this was going to be the drivable PI structure, he would have said this will be our first drivable production intent vehicle. But that's not what's being said. So I think if you read between the lines, this is a body only. That's I think that's what we're looking at. Earlier this month, Chris McCammon and Audra went to Paris to show off our first production body parts at JEC World, the largest international composite show. The Bink blew people away with our tub being the largest. Yeah, so you see here, this is the bink that we've seen multiple times at this point. And he, in this structure has the doors and everything. Um, but it, this isn't bolted together. You see like these, it's, it's exploded just to show off the different panels. Largest carbon fiber SMC part in the world. If you want to see more, as well as some of the amazing Aptera fans that were there, check out our video of the event. We co-exhibited with Energy, our body tool manufacturer. Marco from Energy wanted to introduce himself and talk about the work they did to bring our bank to life. I am Terra Fans, I'm Marco Ciselli, I'm general manager at Energy. E siamo un'azienda italiana che ha costruito gli stampi per uh, il progetto Aptera, che è stato, sono stati poi impiegati da CPC per la produzione dei pezzi con la tecnologia Carbon SMC. E siamo partiti da dei blocchi di acciaio di grandi dimensioni. Yeah. Okay, so Energy is the group that makes the presses and created the dies for Aptera. Uh, and so they are a subcontractor of CPC. And what is what he's explaining here is that the dies are not just um, inert, um, non-moving pieces that just kind of like stamp things out. There's actually a hydraulic extraction system. And so you see all these holes here. These holes, uh, little metal rods will fit in there and they're machined to be completely flush so that when the metal rods are in here, this is, very, this is completely smooth and basically the holes disappear. And then after the part is pressed out and cured and it lifts up, this hydraulic extraction system pushes these metal rods up and then it uh, lifts the piece uh, that's been pressed out the mold so that it can easily be removed. And so it it's a uh, it's actually a lot of engineering to make these things. It's not just these inert um, non-moving part like just just dies that just stamp things out. Li uh, abbiamo scolpiti tramite delle macchine a controllo numerico fino a realizzare queste forme che possiamo vedere qua. Quindi abbiamo lo stampo è composto in due componenti, c'è un punzone con un sistema di estrazione idraulico che per l'estrazione del petto e una, una matrice. Viene deposto so il materiale al suo interno, il stampo si chiude e processa il materiale fino ad ottenere questi componenti qua. È stato un progetto molto interessante che ci ha coinvolto tantissimo e siamo entusiasti insomma di aver fatto parte di questo di questo progetto fu futuristico per un veicolo così tecnologico e innovativo. Ciao. Okay. What's I think this is a really good sign for them is that you have these companies like Energy and CPC that are very invested both from a financial standpoint and an effort standpoint and a PR standpoint with this project, with the Aptera project. So they are really promoting it. You know, the energy has made this their centerpiece at a large trade show where they're trying to get business for themselves. And they have tied their reputation and their business to Aptera. And CPC is doing the same thing. So that shows that they feel like this is going to be a successful project and it's going to work out well for them. So having these companies kind of give their vote of confidence and uh, vouch for it 
um, I think is a great sign. In April, our team is attending DriftX in Abu Dhabi. This is a conference to promote investment in groundbreaking ideas such as Aptera. Stay tuned for coverage of the event as we show off the Aptera to a new part of the world who will surely love solar mobility. All right, so I, we're going to make another video, obviously, about DriftX after we do some research on it. Uh, but we know that Steve Fambro has uh, long-term connections with Abu Dhabi. He had a company called Fambro that he um, developed while he was over there. And we know that they've been talking to people out in the Middle East, probably most specifically in Abu Dhabi, where Steve has connections, um, looking for funding. There is a lot of money in that part of the world, obviously. And, um, you know, we know that they've been offered funding uh, from those, uh, from some some groups in that region, but they came with a lot of stipulations that they felt was not uh, good for Aptera or at this time. So um, they turned down some funding from that area, but they obviously need more funding. Like every startup continuously needs funding um before they all they reach solvency i mean you know tesla needed funding for 10 years before they reached uh profitability and so um you know and rivian and canoe and lucid are still bleeding out money they still need funding um and they they need continued cash inflows to keep themselves solvent so funding is the lifeblood of any startup so they need more funding um and, and they're gonna need funding for years down the line um uh, aptera is probably in a unique position because the surprising information from our interview before was that they're going to need only about 6,000 units per year to become financially stable, which is an extremely low number. And so they're being very capital efficient. And so they should, the, their, their capital needs are going to be far less than uh, traditional automotive companies. But that being the case, they still need funding. It's just a lot less. Anyways, um, I don't know if they plan on taking Gamma over there or the new PI build over there or just they're sending people over there. Um, but um, hopefully this is this represents the culmination of a lot of talks in that region and that they will get funding. Um, that would be great. Back to production progress. PI2 will be our first vehicle driving with a production intent drivetrain, frame, safety structure, and suspension. All right, so this part's a little confusing to me because before... Um, they, you know, Steve said that they, that they were going to make, he sounded like it was just going to be a body part that's not drivable, that they're just testing component placement and wiring placement. But then he brings up PI2 here, which makes me wonder, is this thing going to be PI2, the, the thing that's going to be sent over? And are we going to have a driving uh, production intent vehicle here in the next month? I mean, that would be amazing. Um, I believe it's PI3 that is the production intent vehicle that's going to be the fully cosmetic vehicle with the solar panels and the interior and everything and that's the one that they're obviously going to like you know try to get uh you know probably jay leno to look at again and and large media outlets and um you know and, and large uh um, youtube channels to look at and uh, that's the one that's going to be the important one for them to get a lot of exposure and hopefully more funding um to keep moving forward with this now pi2 i think sounds like it's just a like a drivable mule much like beta you know beta was didn't look attractive but um had it had a it was like a driving dynamics mule and i think pi2 is kind of like that um pi3 is going to be the more cosmetic mule which is like gamma um I, I was trying to find the interview where they said that if you guys remember where it was uh, i'm pretty sure it's pi3 uh, let me know in the comments below it's something the team is preparing to build right now. In Italy, the team is completing the final. So when I first saw this, I thought that this thing was a drive shaft. Um, and uh, the people on Discord quickly disabused me of that idea and said that that's the control uh, steering rod, the, the steering linkage. Uh, and um, after looking at it more carefully, they are correct. Validation on our suspension geometry, and then we'll begin tooling our frame. And... Yes, yeah, so if you look at this, this is definitely a steering rod, um, um, but I wasn't aware that steering rods had these little things that look like uh, CV joint boots. Um, but uh, I, they showed me several pictures from like off a of Tesla and other vehicles, and they definitely have these little boots. I think it's just to like um, cover the uh, 
the grease on the uh, on the little joint here. This is not a CV joint. Suspension components. In preparation for our first production intent vehicles, we've kicked off many parts of our supply chain to complete systems such. Um, so this is the Magworks headlight. As far as we know, they are still the supplier of the headlight. And then, so it looks like they've ordered that and they've ordered the seats. Which is lighting and our seats. Our battery supplier, CTNS, has been kicked off to build production intent battery modules and validate their production process. In parallel, the battery team in San Diego have ordered parts to build the first full packs to speed up the timeline it takes to get a production intent battery driving in our first PI vehicles. In Modena, the team is continuing to press and validate non-structural body parts such as the rear wheel skirt. This tooling progress will continue to happen in the coming months as our first vehicles come together. Thanks to you, things have really been accelerating here at Aptera. Okay, so it looks like a lot of moving parts here. Um, the PI body is coming over. They've ordered the packs from CTNS and they've ordered the other, um, they've ordered the modules from CTNS and then they've ordered other parts to put the packs together. Um, and then they've ordered seats and lighting. Uh, so a lot of moving parts, but so they're really like, they're really like getting the stuff together now. Um, so it's all coming together to make the first, to do the PI builds. So I think it's a very exciting time. We've moved past prototypes and are laser focused on building and validating production systems to get you your Aptera as soon as we can. Subscribe to our YouTube to follow us on the most exciting part of our journey. Till next time. Okay. Um, overall, I think um, it was a short update and there weren't that many details, but the, the what details there were were big. They are getting a, a production intent body. It's unclear if it's a production intent body or a rolling chassis. And so what we need to find out is, is this a vehicle that's going to be a drivable PI or just a, um, or just, um, a PI body to just test out um, location of components and seats and lighting and wiring and other things like that or is it a drivable thing it's it, it kind of hard to tell from the update which of the two it is initially it sounded like it was just a body but later on it sounded like maybe it's going to be a drivable update who knows all right so thanks for watching guys have a great day